Hello everyone and welcome to Sports Japan. I'm your host Ayako Kisa. As always, we've got some great stuff lined up for you from the world of Japanese sports and martial arts. On today's show, we visit the Sumo Summit, a unique sumo event held in Japan for the first time in top scene. And follow springboard diver Ken Terauchi, who's hoping to reach the podium at the summer's Rio Olympics in our front runners. All right, so let's get going with this week's main focus story. This week, we're going to take a look at the classical martial arts school of Onoha Ittoryu Kenjutsu. The Onoha Ittoryu Kenjutsu School's practice room is rather unconventional. It's a Baptist church in Tokyo. Takemi Sasamori is the head priest and master of the school. He's an expert swordsman who carries on the Onoha Ittoryu school's traditions, which have continued for more than four centuries. Today, Sasamori Sensei guides us through the complexity of Japanese classical martial arts. So let's see how these fascinating combat styles first began. Classical martial arts have their roots on the battlefield, beginning in the Warring States period during the 15th century. Numerous weapons and techniques were born from the need to defeat opponents as quickly and easily as possible. These styles evolved into countless martial arts schools which spread across Japan. Onoha Ittoryu Kenjutsu is one such school. Onoha Ittoryu is well known as one of its masters gave instruction to a shogun, the supreme military commander of Japan. It also had a huge impact on the development of modern kendo. The great swordsman Ito Itosai was the school's founder. It's said that he struck down 57 opponents in 33 confrontations with a real sword and also overcame 67 enemies using a wooden sword. Sasamori Sensei told us more about this legendary swordsman. He was extremely strong and felled many of his opponents. Anyone that was lucky enough to survive was always embarrassed. Some of his enemies went as far as pretending to be his students. They asked him to drink with them and got him really drunk. While he was asleep, they charged him in a very large group. But he woke up, stole their swords, and cut them all down. Itosai wielded his flashing blade almost as if in a trance. He developed what was known at the time as Itoryu, after coming to realize the importance of felling an opponent with a single blow, whatever the circumstances. Itosai's teachings were taken up by his disciple Ono Tadaki, Ono formalized the techniques, naming the school Onoha Ittoryu after his family name. Ono rose to prominence as the sword fighting instructor of the second Tokugawa shogun Hidetada. Ono didn't hold back, even when sparring with the shogun. The training was fierce, and he didn't hesitate to strike hard with his wooden sword. In later years, Onoha Ittoryu split into many sub-schools and continued to prosper as one of Japan's foremost sword-fighting traditions. Continuing the school's spirit and techniques today is the responsibility of Sasamori-sensei, the 17th master. We have to focus on our attitude as well as technique. It's a deep and complex tradition. I've been studying for more than 40 years. I still can't fully grasp it and think I have a long way to go. No matter how much I continue, the end of the road is still in the distance. During practice, students form pairs, 
learning skills with one attacking and one defending. One characteristic is that the defender uses protective equipment known as onigote. Oh, it's heavy! The onigote weighs 1.8 kilograms. It's six times heavier than a kendo wrist guard. Long ago, we practiced with real swords, but they lead to injuries. So we switched to wooden swords and started stopping blows just before landing them. But this meant that we couldn't really complete the technique, so we came up with the onigote. If someone goes for your head, you can block by lifting your arm. The onigote made it possible to confirm the correct technique. <laughs> In kendo, they strike like this. This one I can take it. Yeah. And let's see the real one. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's the difference? The way you use your arms. In kendo, you strike, but we cut. In classical martial arts, only proper technique results in a proper cut. Such cutting techniques have been passed on for generations in the Onoha Ittoryu school. There is one cutting technique we use called the Kiriotoshi, where you have to keep moving forwards. You can never move backwards or sideways. It helped make our school famous. The Kiriotoshi. Two samurai approach each other for a duel. They both attack at the same time. But only one falls to the ground. This is the popular image of Kiriotoshi. The aim is to be the first to get out in front and fell your opponent. Sasamori Sensei gives us a demonstration. The Kiriotoshi may look simple, but it incorporates numerous skills for felling your opponent. First, you strike the point near your opponent's blade tip where the sword is weak. Then, you follow through like this for a thrust to the throat. After that, you make a firm strike to the head. If we take away the guard, you can see where the blow lands. You have to keep your lower body axis moving directly forward. We call this Sharin Zenten. Sharin Zenten describes how the position of the swordsman's two feet as he moves forward are likened to the wheels of a carriage. This image lets the swordsman imagine that he can blast through anything in his path. If something goes into a revolving propeller, it will be repelled. Spinning wheels also have the power to repel anything. It's the same if your opponent's sword comes in from the front or the side. It can also be repelled. That's the essence of Kiriotoshi. How many techniques are there in Onohaitoryu? There are 175 that we learn. 175? <gasps> It's all up in here, Sensei? You learn them with your body, too. Some of the 175 Onoha Ittoryu techniques also involve fighting with the Kodachi, or short sword. Some techniques focus on the elbow joints. The sword hand is used to ward off an attack, while the other is used to lock the opponent's arm at the elbow. These techniques make maximum use of the short sword's characteristics. When on the battlefield, warriors had to learn to handle various different weapons in order to survive.
many of those weapons and techniques can be seen at the classical martial arts demonstration in Tokyo. The bow and arrow was one weapon that was essential for striking distant opponents. One form of archery that is reminiscent of an actual battlefield situation is yabusame, a style of horseback archery. The techniques and spirit of archery also live on in kudo, another traditional form that remains popular. Rifles are a battlefield weapon that could strike harder and further than the bow and arrow. Skills include methods of loading and firing as rapidly as possible. Some large guns were more like handheld cannons, used for destroying castle gates or simply frightening enemies with their loud boom. In contrast, one weapon that developed for the purpose of one-on-one -on -one combat is the kusarigama. The weight is used to wrap the chain around the opponent's weapon before going in for the kill with the sickle. With the weight spinning, it's difficult for the opponent to get close. The kusarigama is an extremely versatile weapon. The disciplines of taijutsu are used in close quarters combat. These ancient skills using the bare hands later developed into judo, aikido, and karate. Taijutsu contains many lethal techniques, such as choking. There are even methods for slamming your opponent to the ground, similar to wrestling. In Taijutsu, any vulnerable point is a target. Further classical martial arts techniques include ways of disarming someone with a weapon. There are even methods for throwing an attacker using a sword hilt. All kinds of simple movements can be developed into deadly skills. Classical martial arts performed today present a fascinating glimpse of secret knowledge that has been passed down through the ages. Now we are going to see a demonstration of the Tachiai Bato, the final routine learned by our practitioners. Tachiai Bato is composed of five specific kumitachi, or forms. In the third kumitachi, the sword is moved in a gentle circle which repels your opponent's attack, creating room to move in and cut. In the fifth kumitachi, a carefully devised technique allows the swordsman to respond to an attack from any direction or angle. The ability to perform the tachiai bato is evidence of skills developed through many